The Montreal Protocol is an illustration not only for how science can inform human actions, because it was science that opened our eyes to the opening hole in the ozone layer. It also gave us the answer of what was driving that problem, what we could do about it, and here we are. We've actually begun to turn this story around, and it's a, very much a story of the 20th century and of humanity joining hands, the United Nations contributing both the platform and the scientific community giving us, in a sense, both the rationale for acting and the means to act. El Protocolo de Montreal es un acuerdo internacional que ha sido firmado por todos los países para disminuir y controlar las sustancias agotadoras de la capa de ozono. The country it has met the targets of the Montreal Protocol since the first phase of targets of the CFCs and right now we are way ahead in phasing out HCFCs, we are way ahead of the targets that are set out under the Montreal Protocol. In 1991, La capa de ozono es una capa de moléculas de ozono que nos protege de la radiación ultravioleta, especialmente la radiación ultravioleta B, que es eh, dañina para los organismos. La capa de ozono nos permite mantener los equilibrios de vida dentro del planeta. En Chile desarrollamos tres proyectos en supermercados para cambiar la tecnología de refrigeración de HCFC a CO2 transcrítico. Chile ha cumplido con todas las metas relacionadas con el protocolo de Montreal y sus enmiendas. Eh, Chile tiene, ha realizado varios proyectos de cambio en los sistemas de refrigeración, cambio en sistemas de climatización. Cambiar los HCFC por CO2 tiene un efecto directo en la mitigación del cambio climático. Modern refrigeration starts on the late 1800s and uh, we used to have CO2, which is natural, and ammonia, which is natural. On uh, 1930, more or less, we invented chemical refrigerants. Chemical refrigerants are molecules made by men to help refrigeration be possible. When food became broadly available, we all needed refrigerators in our homes. To put ammonia inside one was quite dangerous because Ammonia is flammable and it's also highly toxic, so we cannot use it. And CO2 works with such high pressures that also we could not use it. Chemical refrigerants were a very effective way to promote and to have everybody to have a refrigerator at their homes. When you drop into the atmosphere one kilogram of a chemical refrigerant, you are dropping into the atmosphere the equivalent of 4,000 kilograms of CO2. When we realized what we were doing to our planet, we started looking into options that were not harmful to our environment. This planet no da para más si seguimos con los mismos patrones de producción y de consumo. Y esa es la invitación que se está haciendo, particularmente en proyectos como esto. ¿Qué es lo interesante y por qué era tan importante la participación del PNUD y del Sistema de Naciones Unidas? Por su posición imparcial. A Naciones Unidas se le cree. Hoy, en Chile, empresas están cofinanciando con recursos de gobierno en alianzas públicas privadas y en consulta con sus comunidades proyectos de desarrollo particularmente en temas ambientales. All the parties involved, politicians, government, private business, engineers, found that this was a good opportunity to do one thing that was right and economically feasible. We all uh, solved the difference that we had and in 180 days we put together one successful project that was running and was very efficient. Now that that first project is working properly. People are not afraid anymore about the technology. 
El frío alimentario para Cinco Sur y particularmente para Jumbo es muy importante, primero porque es amigable al medio ambiente y porque le podemos dar a nuestros clientes la mejor experiencia de compra. Es un sistema muy robusto y muy importante para nosotros que nos permite mantener nuestros productos en las mejores condiciones posibles para brindarle a nuestros clientes una mejor compra y unos mejores productos perecibles para ellos. Muchas veces en los países no logramos avanzar con un proyecto. ¿Por qué? Porque es muy innovador, es muy creativo, es diferente es salir de la zona de confort. Entonces, ahí es donde son tan importantes proyectos como este del PNUD, porque bajamos el riesgo al asumir ese costo de financiamiento e incluso también de lo que podría funcionar o no funcionar. By switching to natural refrigerants, we can cut by half a degree Celsius the increase of the temperature on our planet. Transcritical CO2 is a way of using CO2 as a refrigerant, as a single refrigerant in a system. And when it's transcritical, the pressure is very high for a refrigerant, and you have to manage it in a different way. Thanks to electronics, we have developed algorithms and uh, processors that can handle that. 100 years ago, that was not possible. This room will receive in two weeks a brand new transcritical CO2 system. Thanks to the new technology available, now we're in a condition to safely use CO2. We all want our children and our grandchildren to live and enjoy a safe and healthy planet. Since we became party to the Montreal Protocol, there are so many activities that we have undertaken as uh, the Kingdom of Eswatini, formerly known as Swaziland, towards keeping the environment clean through the phasing out of ozone depleting substances. Amongst those activities that we have undertaken is the, the collaboration that we have had with Palfrid Swaziland. In the fridge you've got two parts, you've got the refrigerant itself, which is the part that makes the fridge cold, and then you've got the insulation that keeps the fridge cold. You can't do one without the other. The insulating system that we used in the fridge had to be replaced. The previous ones were harmful for the environment. The project entailed changing all the machinery that is used for putting the insulation in the fridge. Okay, the, the consumer will benefit in two ways. First of all, they've got an environmental friendly fridge. And secondly, the, the fridges will be cheaper because the foam that we use for our manufacturing process is cheaper than foam that uses the other blowing agents. When we started with this particular intervention, there were many aspects that we wanted to achieve. One of them basically is the compliance to the targets that have been agreed for uh, at global level. But more importantly, it was to demonstrate that there is a possibility to zero into a particular industry and facilitate greater impact when it comes to the compliance. It was also facilitating access of the country to these global resources which have been enabled through the Montreal Protocol. I think that for the various SDGs such as SDG 13, such as the industrial one that speaks to economic development, there is a very close interaction and this particular technology transfer is actually facilitating that kind of growth for Africa. New technology that we've adopted as a country, it has already helped Eswatini in terms of opening new job opportunities, especially at the fridge manufacturing facility, and also the exploration of new markets, and because markets have those demands that are environmentally friendly. So the new technology, because it's environmentally friendly, we have been able to access those markets as a country in terms of exports. The country has to come up with the prioritized SDGs, but it would never be able to achieve it unless it achieves an economic growth of about 
uh, eight to ten percent per annum, and that is very difficult with the current technological pattern. So this, the success of the Palfridge uh, company, has opened a new door of opportunities for the country to absorb uh, a more sustainable, or, or to be on a more sustainable technological path than in the past. One would say the project has helped the Kingdom of Eswatini. We are doing all we could to make it sure that we comply to the Montreal Protocol. So we are appealing to the whole world to make it sure that we all work together to avoid and phase out any substance that might destroy our ozone layer. Moyn China is the largest HCFC producer, consumer, exporter, importer in the world. UNDP working hand in hand with the Chinese government on policy environment, on legal frameworks, on capacity building, but also with the private sector on innovation and technology demonstration is actually a very positive combination that will take the project forward and that will create a baseline others can replicate and that can be scaled up in China and globally. By UNDP helping with this project, we are addressing several sustainable development goals. The most important is, of course, to address climate action, SDG 13, but it also has very beneficial effects on health issues contributing to SDG 3. Because of the new technology introduced, it is estimated that the future greenhouse gas emissions uh, will be very positively impacted and uh, we, are, we are estimating that 375 tons of HCFC 22 every year will be eliminated and reducing greenhouse gas emissions equivalent to over 600,000 tons of CO2. We have used 这个氢能性就是跟长规的氢能性相比来说因为二氧化碳在低温下具有非常好的氢能效率 节能性，就是氨二氧化碳比普通的系统双级智能系统要提升百分之二十左右的这种效率。啊，目前我们这套系统从二零一二年正式全面产业化以后，到现在我们冰轮环境在中国大陆一共承建了一百五十余套的氨
When it comes to the role that UNDP plays in the Montreal Protocol, then it is principally that of helping countries implement projects that will reduce ozone-depleting substances. That often involves capacity building, it involves the introduction of new technologies, of new manufacturing processes, and so our role is to provide support in both the financial, technical and implementation sense to countries to tackle the objectives of the Montreal Protocol. Doing that allows us to assist countries not only in meeting their commitments under the Montreal Protocol, but also by linking, for example, the Montreal Protocol, its Kigali Amendment, with the outcomes and objectives of the Climate Change Convention, and therein lies also the strength of UNDP. We are the UN's development program. Our approach is to look at sustainable development solutions where investing one dollar in solving one problem can yield multiple benefits across a series of goals.